Raptor is a visual programming environment based on flowcharts. This video will use subcharts to demonstrate animation. The basic concept of computer animation is the same as this simple flipbook. Each page has a drawing of the same object that is slightly different. Viewing them in rapid succession gives the illusion of movement. To do this in a Raptor program, we repeatedly draw an object moving in a small amount each time. The Draw Smiley subchart used in the previous video will work nicely for this since it is based on X and Y variables. This program creates and draws a smiley face, then uses a loop to repeatedly change the X coordinate and redraw the smiley face. This gives the illusion of movement, but it leaves a trail of old images. The solution is to erase the smiley face before changing the X coordinate. Now we have a basic animation, but two improvements can be made to this technique. First, erasing the old image before drawing the new image will erase any other graphics that are on the screen. In this example, a subchart to draw a background has been added and is called before the animation loop begins. Obviously, erasing the background is unacceptable. The solution is to clear the entire window and redraw everything with each movement. This solves the erasing problem, but the animation has noticeable flashing as each object is drawn. A more significant improvement is to ask Raptor to draw all new objects in an off-screen buffer and only show the new image when everything is complete. This is done by calling the Freeze Graph Window procedure at the beginning of a program just after opening the graph window. Note that the Freeze Graph Window call will enable this feature for the duration of the program so it should only be called once at the very beginning. Placing it on the Open Window subchart is a good idea. The next step is to call Update Graph Window when everything has been drawn and we are ready to display the new image. The call to Update Graph Window should only be done when the entire image is complete. If the update is called after each individual part of the image is drawn, the animation will flash. Here is another simple animation program that demonstrates two different ways of moving objects. The green ball starts in a random location, moves in a random direction, and bounces when it hits the edges of the window. The red ball moves in a continuous circle. The initialized subchart is called once at the beginning of the program. The random function is used to create random x and y coordinates for the green ball. The random function creates a random value between 0 and 1. To obtain a larger value, multiply by the range, Use the floor function to throw away the decimal places, and then add the minimum value allowed. In this example, the x and y coordinates for the green ball are set to be within 10 pixels of the edges of the window. The delta x and delta y variables indicate the amount of change in the x and y coordinates of the green ball each time it moves. These are set to random values between 1 and 3. The time variable is initialized to 0 and will be incremented each time the red ball moves. The sine and cosine functions are then applied to this variable to determine x and y coordinates on the unit circle. The comments in the program explain this calculation in more detail. The most important thing to note in this program is that the only loop used is in the main program. The two move subcharts did not have loops in them. Instead, each of the move subcharts only move their object's coordinates by one step. The animation is created by repeatedly calling these two subcharts from the main program. The move green ball subchart adds the delta x amount to the current x coordinate and then tests to see if the x coordinate has reached the right or left edge of the window. If it has, the delta x value is multiplied by negative 1, so the next time this subchart is called, the ball will move in the opposite direction. This same process is applied to the y coordinate and the end result is that the green ball will appear to bounce when it reaches the edges of the window. The move red ball subchart increments the time variable and then recalculates the x and y coordinates of the red ball using the sine and cosine functions. Again, this calculation is explained in more detail in the comments in the program. Once again, the important thing to note is that neither of the move subcharts have loops on them. The only loop in this program is on the main subchart. It produces the animation by clearing the window, moving and drawing each ball, and then calling the update graph window procedure to show the new image.
This basic arrangement of symbols can be used to create many different animation effects. This is the end of this video. You should now be able to use subcharts and animation in your programs.